It's wonderful, smooth and elegant and fruity. Vanilla. Welcome to whiskey.com, where fine spirits meet. My name is Lüning, Horst Lüning, and I'm the master taster of whiskey.com. And today you see a big grin on my face because I'm tasting the first time in my life a coffee malt. Oh, some coffee in it? No, no, not coffee, coffee. Eneas Coffey was an Irish engineer and he invented, or no, he improved the column still for the whiskey production. He lived from 1780 until 1852 and uh, there was another engineer, a British engineer called Robert Stein uh, and he lived or he invented the column still in 1826 and Eneas Coffey he improved the uh, column still 1831 and then it was called the patent still or the coffee still from the name Eneas Coffey. Um, what's the specialty of a coffee still? Well it's a column still, it's a huge pipe, diameter 3 feet, 1 meter, uh, quite tall, 15, 18, 20 meters, 60 feet and in this uh, pipe there are bottoms in it with holes in it where vapor and liquid can pass and uh, you fill the wash, the beer into this still, heat it up and then the vapors go up from bottom to bottom and the liquid which is not boiling goes down from bottom to bottom and with the time after an hour or so uh, the column still is stable and you have the alcohols on the, top, on the top and the water and the heavier oils and the bottom. And the specialty with this still is you can run them forever. It's a continuous process. You add constantly add beer and remove water and your desired whiskey. Um, here you see a picture of the inside of such a coffee still. I think this one is from Canada. It's Waterloo. Oh. And here you can see this bottom and this hole in it where the vapors and the water or the liquid can pass. Um, the invention of this continuous still brought, well, a boost in whiskey production in Scotland. Cheap whiskey production because all the labor for filling and cleaning and heating the pot stills were reduced. It was running forever, just one man, one man supervising such a column. And this brought the advantage of the cheap Scotch whiskey over the Irish. Ah, I have to take a video about this historic moment. Yeah, then in 2009, the British government approved a regulation which forbids to produce a malt whiskey on column stills. They have to use the old-fashioned way of pot stills for a single malt whiskey. And therefore uh, there is no malt whiskey from coffee stills from Scotland. There are single blends in Scotland where the malt whiskey comes from pot still and the grain whiskies come from column stills and they are mixed together in one distillery to a single grain, a uh, single blend whiskey. Interesting. Well, have a look at this Nika coffee malt. Uh, here in the back there's a picture, picture of this column still. Screw cap, very strong and well done. Sealing in. The whiskey looks darker than it is because uh, the glass has some color. It's tan. 
what do I expect? Well, <clears throat> pot stills uh, distill from when you start taking out the uh, the raw whiskey at 70% ABV and then uh, during the distillation process this ABV coming out of the still reduces down to 63-60%. Um, and in a coffee still you reach ABVs up to 80-84% ABV. So I expect to be the whiskey to be smoother because uh, the separation of the alcohols and the heavier oils, the fusel oils, which carry a lot of taste but also produce headache, uh, this is and uh, separation is better on the coffee still. So I expect a, a smoother whiskey. Um, but most of the taste of a whiskey results from the casks. So one say that 50 to half to two thirds of the taste of whiskey come from the casks and I'm afraid there is no uh, nothing told about the used casks in this whiskey. Um, there are some whiskies on the market, these white wine whiskies, and look like white wine uh, they might have perhaps a third influence of the cask with the whole taste. But typically it's 50 to 50 percent to 66 percent. So definitely a malt whiskey with a yes, a strong cask influence. And on top of that is a lot of fruitiness, a light citrus note, not strong, and vanilla. So they used excellent casks. I'm afraid those excellent casks bring a lot of aroma in this whiskey so that you can't distinguish this coffee malt exactly. So wonderful, smooth and elegant and fruity vanilla. But there's also some spicy note, perhaps from some sort of oak. Yeah. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Sweet, sweet clementine, oranges, juice oranges, and spiciness, coffee, praline, and some some other fruit. Not this citrus fruit, but sweeter fruits. And very well balanced, and there's no hint of alcohol at all, even when this whiskey is 45% ABV, so the column still reduces the impact of the alcohol or the yes the stronger components of the whiskey onto your mouth. Wonderful. A long aftertaste, the spiciness is gone and results in a long aftertaste. Sweet. Very well done. So, Scotland, you took yourself the chance to produce such a wonderful, smooth, elegant, well-balanced whiskey, because it's not allowed to have a coffee malt in Scotland. On the other hand, I'm still waiting for a single grain produced on pot stills, the other way around. This would be give more influence, more power. Uh, to a grain whiskey, which would be otherwise, yeah, quite one-dimensional. Wonderful idea from Nika. Thank you very much for doing this to the whiskey community. There's more to come. Stay tuned and feel free to add your comments about this whiskey in our whiskey database. Thank you very much. <laughs>